Do you, do you know what Steve said when he saw that car? Go on. He said, it has captured Carl. Hmm. What do you mean? Well, you just look utterly gormless. <laughs> In the pictures, it's captured <laughs> brilliant. You know, how, like a good photographer can do that and like, capture the essence of someone. <laughs> That's good stuff. This is what the phone message he left me Wednesday on my mobile. But I just uh, is chatting about certain things that are going on at the moment. Uh, what he does need to know. Um, oh, Duncan, who mentions, is my agent, and you know, you you understand a few other things. But this is the sort of message I get from Carl, right? Windsor. Old messages. Alright. Ten past twelve. Wednesday. Um, just getting loads of f***ing people calling me all the time about sh**. Yesterday, DVDs signing for BBC London. I don't work there, but I've been dragged into that. I've got a woman on, uh, leaving a message from Talk PR, going on about, do you, do you want to go and see Pop Idol again? Alright. They're just saying, uh, you, and some listeners can go, so I'm sure you'll love that. I've got Jim Benner wanting you to introduce the tin buckets at the Astoria, so can can you just like let Duncan know that I'm, I'm doing his job whilst he's sat on his arse with his thumb firmly up his arse, can you let him know that I'm running around like a c**t here sorting s**t out for you? Alright, see you later. <laughs> Message left so do you know what I mean? Oh. I know, but that's Can the kind of phone message he's leaving. But that, but, do you remember but, who he was before but, but you? But he's even with annoyed you. that he gets a phone call. I remember he got a phone call for you to do a voiceover and didn't yeah. pass it on. You missed a voiceover. That yeah. was thousands of pounds. No, I did, I did it, pass it on though. I told you. You I did. Said you I said someone had phoned. Yeah. yeah. That's not good enough. But I, who's that? Well, she she didn't say, and I didn't ask. But of course she said. She didn't say. Rubbish. So you didn't take the number down. Just when she went, oh, can you tell Steve to call me? And you went, yeah. Yeah. Well, I just thought you'd know her already. I should have known it was a woman, so I should have known. He's having a go, you see. Unbelievable. I don't know how he's gone back on me. You're the one who was picking on it. Yeah, exactly. I'm saying. I'm defending. Why is he having a go but at he you? He never because... picks on Ricky because he knows you are his bread and butter. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you know what I mean. The only reason he's got Mondays off is because you're still doing this show. Yeah. yeah. That's why he's scared of you. That's why he's like he has a go at you on the phone, but he always picks on me because he knows you know I'm a pushover. I'm a nice guy. He's scared of you. I can't believe it. I don't know how it works. Is that true? Steve, I'm always sorting you out. I'll look after you. Mm. Sort you out with tickets. I'm not saying you don't, but I, I, I got you today. Why are you thinking? What do you mean you're sorting out tickets in Largo? What's this? Right, whenever you want tickets. Yeah, yeah sorry, like, I don't want to use this as like moaning time and that, because yeah. I don't like to moan. I'm busy in that, right? <laughs> I've, sorted, <laughs> I've sorted you out tickets for gigs. Yeah. Right? Well, somebody doesn't even turn up to. Yeah. yeah we won't even go on about that. Yeah. Right? Larger. He was sorting out the cure. He complained it was boring. Yeah. <laughs> there was that big drummer lager that yeah. you had and you said, oh, put that in your room for me. Yeah. Because I don't want to carry it home. Right? You're lazy. So I said, all right, then I'll put it in my room. It goes missing, it gets nicked. <laughs> then you have a go at me because it got nicked. Yeah. I get you another one, you make me carry it around town for you for half an hour, then you say, oh, I can't be bothered taking it home, can you take it back to work for me? Yeah. Yeah. But interestingly, this is like a year ago, so it's, it's, <laughs> obviously, it's still, still pressing on you, Oh, hang it? on, and I forgot the one when we had an argument over 50p. <laughs> <laughs> when yeah, went you out for a coffee. Give me back that you owed me. Uh, that was the same day you'd given him about forty quid worth of lager. <laughs> but see, this is my problem. This was my point at the time. It's not the fifty fifty p in terms of money is not what's important. The fact that you think you don't have to give me money back because it's only fifty p. That was the point at stake. Mm. I, it's me who makes a decision. I oh, don't worry about the fifty p. Not you. It's only fifty p. I'm not going to give it to you. Do you know what I mean? There's mm. got to be rules. Otherwise, it's chaos, Carl. Come on, mate. All right. I don't want to fall out about no, it. No, it's not fair. <laughs> Should we kiss and make up? Do you want that? Do you want oh, that? It's all right. Yeah. yeah. Well, should we play a little record and come back to this? Because I can't believe it started with you slagging him off, Rick, and I've ended up as the monster. I know. Bit of R.E.M. Yeah. It's best if if you leave it. Well, we're not going to leave it. We're going to get you on the poster. Yeah. I mainly have to see myself on videotape this morning. That's oh, I, I showed him. Um, um, I, you know, uh, the animal show I did, the show. Yes. I'm doing a video, and I did behind the scenes footage, and I've got. A, uh, you've seen it, haven't you? I feel a bit of Carl on there, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah. It's lovely. He can't believe it. He said, "Is it playing slow?" <laughs> He's so slow. When I come into the office, going, "All right." It, that's how you I'm talk. My head as well. I look like I'm looking into a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not happy with it. I just think that if we're willing to 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 uh, if Ricky's willing to use his celebrity profile for the sake of the show, yeah. I'm willing to look like a, you know, let's say a fairly handsome kind of cool customer. I think at least the very least, Carl, is that you appear on there as well. Yeah. You could dress. Are up you smart. are you worried that you'll look the worst out of all three of us? Uh, who am I standing next to? I'm next to Steve. <laughs> 
I'm, pr I'm fairly confident. Yeah. <laughs> I like the way it's so predictable. You pull the string because you know what it is. It's <laughs> you pull the string. <laughs> I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkerton. Still arguing, this time about having help from me and my dad. What do you think, Carl? No, I'm not- we- I don't want this to turn into some sort of wacky type of thing where we're pretending we're arguing. Yeah. Well, we're not pretending we're not we pretending are. you are arguing. Yeah, I know, I know what people will think we're messing about. Oh, right? that wouldn't have thought so. We just need to- we can talk about it later, sort it out. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's just that Carl's a little bit stressed. I'm not, I'm not stressed by And he doesn't really understand that, you know, you know, me and Steve have got lots of different jobs in the week, he's just got one job. Yeah, but and we sort of rely on people getting messages to us, you know, as soon as they get them, you know, and not sort of deleting them from their phone selfishly. Yeah. Just things like that, you know, people being on the ball. Not just thinking about themselves all the time, not just thinking about number one. What do you think, Carl? Whatever. Do you know what I mean? Whatever. Don't get all maudlin again. Just have a little discussion. Yeah. This is annoying. Yeah? Guess what? Think of this, you little slaphead twat. Um, apparently, <laughs> that's so in his ass. That's so in his ass. Right? Apparently, women can get bald treatment on the National Health Service, but men can't. What do you think of that? Do you think that's fair? Is that a fact? It's a fact. We what? should point out that Carl is. Uh, would you say balding? Yeah. Would that be fair? Well, either that or a wide parting. <laughs> 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 Um, oh, you know, um, um rubbish. that's rubbish, Carl, those places. You, you, I'm ashamed to give them away. Carl, you know our mate Johnny, he's a Doctor Who fan. Yeah. Do you remember, um, he bought, um, uh, the Doctor Who magazine, um, and, uh, he went, um, to the toilet, and Steve got post-it notes and put geek on every page, and Johnny opened it on the tube, right, and it had geek and everything, and Johnny bought in the, the new Doctor Who magazine, I think this week's or this month's, right, and they've, they've, um, they've done the perfect Doctor Who fan. Right, what the geek is, right, and it looks exactly like Steve. All right, don't have a go, really. It does, and, he went, and I, I've, it, I, I'm going to try and put it on the website. It's amazing. It's got your hair, glasses. It stands like you. It's sort of dressed like you, and it's only. And it's, it's hilarious, and he's, he's, he was. I mean, I'm insulting you now. It's, it sounds like an insult, but if you'd see it, you'd laugh. Play. Well, Rockbusters, right? Yeah. All right, here we go. Just a little um, bit annoyed. Just uh, three clues. Uh, <laughs> we lost all the energy in this show, aren't we? Well, I'm just, I can't get over that insult. I'm just a little... No, we did, though. Did you just come out? No, I can't be honest with you. Just came out left field. I wasn't expecting an insult. No, and, but uh, I think there was a sense of camaraderie on this. No, like, just it, email in, ricky.gervaisaxfm.co.uk. Right, right, what are we doing? I'm just, I'm just reading out the clues. Should we put this, let's put this one in for the Sony Award. Let's put this show in for the Sony Award. Play a song, Carl, because I need to discuss things with him. I've talked before about him Edit it down. Get this down to three minutes, it'd be a great show. Busters in a minute. I tell you, you're going to go along later to the Live 8 gig and you're probably going to see some bands that are going to make an effort to entertain you, but oh, if you want entertainment, Rick, you know it. Go on. There's only one person to book. Go on. Me. If, if you, you know, you have perhaps yeah. something to do, because uh, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously a top well, DJ I, I, on the radio, I, but where my, where I really come into my own is DJing in any kind of club in Well, you told me you do a DJing, uh, I didn't go to it, uh, DJing at a party and you said the place was rocking. The place was roaring. And I loved it. Uh, Carl just, just said he was there and they weren't. Well, that's nonsense, Carl, they because you know so. very well that when I was put, I put on a tune, they'd cheer. Yeah, but it, it was late on in the night, they would have done that whatever you put on. That's nonsense. No, they, they said they were happy and everything. I'm not saying they were having a good time. It was your party. It was it was all right, but they weren't going mental like you're you're sort of making up. They were definitely going mental. Nah, when I put on the proclaimers, nah. they could not believe their luck. Nah. <laughs> they they would have walked a thousand miles. <laughs> was it good though? Was he? Were they really? What were they doing? Were they dancing? They were dancing, were they? It's dancing and that, but they weren't sort of cheering, going you know more and all that at the end. What's about? Oh, Take wow. on me came on. They, they, mm, the big, yeah. the big cheer went up. Oh, I don't know to believe. I've been there, done it, Steve. I've, I've been the DJ as well. I oh, it might be jealousy. It I might think be like professional a, jealousy there. Like a, yeah. I think it's because my fortunes are on the up, and these are on the down. You know, we all know famously that he had uh, Pilkey's making, making music, music his happen. DJ outfit. Didn't happen. Did, didn't. I did enough. I just wanted to do enough to pay for the equipment, <laughs> and I did. And that was that. But I don't like crowds, do I? <laughs> It's, it's one of them things, isn't it? Like I've said before, when you first see something, it's a bit of a shock. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's like the Elephant Man or whatever. <laughs> yeah. First time you see him, it's that sort of, oh, look at that. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you saw Steve? No, I'm not being funny. Do you remember the, 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 the first? Yeah, but I've said this before, it's always, <laughs> then you get used to how people look and you don't, 
<laughs> no, no. You... I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna, you got the fire record. No, but. Cause I just, <laughs> Who's the winner? The winner, very lucky, Sandra Cassidy of Leon C. She gets all those great prizes. You know, we've actually had people emailing in saying, this is the worst Rockbusters ever, because it was too easy, it was boring. Oh. Uh, 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 this is just, uh, don't shoot the messenger. Oh, Other dear. people saying, um, it well, really has run its course. Some people genuinely agree oh, with Ricky. Oh, Carl, this must hurt, mate. Stinging attacks on you. Um, some people just slagging you off generally, saying that oh, you, win, you whinge all the time. Looks like Steve like. was right when he, um, sort of like, poo-poos your ideas. So. When he, uh, when he wheeze on your so bonfire. Other, someone else, I swear to God, someone else emailed in and said, don't bother sending me the prizes, take them to a charity shop, or pawn them, give me the money, I'd rather have it. So I don't know what to say, Carl, I just wonder if it really has run its course now. Alright, well, well we'll see what you come up with next week, well, then. <laughs> let's, see, uh, let's see what you do, let's see what you come in with. Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Top five to one. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you'll be popping in with another, another hip hop track yeah. full of, uh, yeah. of Effin and Jeff and well, no, no, I won't, I won't bring it into you, I'll do it myself at home. Because obviously that makes it easier. Oh, oh dear. Obviously you can't cope. Oh, dear. Are you actually gonna be here next week or are you still gonna be in Cornwall? No, you see, there again, I'll be back, I'll be back in time. Oh. And in the, in the week, when I go to, you know, Cornwall, to see the monkey world. Yeah, you're two-day past the monkey world. That still works. Yeah. <laughs> What? what? You're going to interview some of the monkeys. I love, stories. I love that. I love that. You were going, could a monkey live without bones? And so I'm going, Carl, shut the f- please, just look at the monkeys and eat your ice cream. And that's work, is it? What? Um, anyway, I just thought I wanted to say, really. Here's tragic. What's tragic? What, what did you want me to say about that song? Just your opinion. Your own opinion was fine. It's, it's in fact, in fact, your own opinion is better than anything I could really hope for. W without doubt, whenever I ask you a question, you constantly surprise us. Yeah, you're, it's it's wonderful. So only ever carry on telling the truth, carry on saying exactly what's on your mind, and I think this could become a great. You're like a man who was frozen <laughs> in Victorian era <laughs> and has been reawoken and he's kind of discovering the world. Some <laughs> things make sense, other things yeah. don't. It's beautiful, it's as really opposed right. to one that was made in a castle in Victorian times, like <laughs> Steve. Oh, that's just- Oh, I've joined in with Carl. I can't believe it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it was irresistible though, wasn't it? I'm really sorry. Should we play a record? I mean, I know what Steve's like, he is tight, right? Is, well. is, he, no, he is. And you know that, don't you, Steve? Financially, I mean, I'm not, you mean? Well, no, I mean, just the way you are, you're very sure. sort of, you know, you, you're not- I'm careful. You're not wasteful with your money. I'm careful. <laughs> no, I'm not wasteful, absolutely right. No, no, but to the extreme. Not at all to the extreme. Not at all to the extreme. No, no, no. no. Look after the pennies, the pains will take care of themselves. Alright? <sighs> Simple to remember, good advice. Yeah, Alright? but the thing is, right, um, I know that I took the mickey out of you for like, you know, the way you look and stuff. Sure. Right? Well, I'm right back at you. But the thing is, you can't help that. <laughs> Absolutely. But I'll tell you something that women don't like. Sure. And it's fellas who are tight with the money. Sure. I'm not, I'm not frugal with money with ladies, I'm frugal with money with you. Mm, well, I've got no reason to splash money out on you. I've never seen you splash money out. Well, you've never been out with me. Have you ever, have, Steve? Have you ever splashed out on a lady? Um, no, but I hope to one day. <laughs> the right lady. <laughs> Play a record. See, strokes. Someday. Now it was a better, better choice wouldn't it, to start off with. Um, oh hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen. XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously. Steve Mitchell. No, come on. Let's get my name right from now on. That that novelty's worn off. What is it? Is it Steve Merchant? Oh yeah, they, yeah. that's the wrong one, isn't it, Mitchell? The Guardian got it wrong. It's Steve Merchant. And the more I say Mitchell, the more people are thinking exactly might be it might be Mitchell. Oh god, sorry, Dave. Um, <laughs> but Carl wanted to start off with the stereophonics. Oh, loser, because it was a newer track. And Carl now, we've made him what he is. He was nothing when Nobody. we found him. He's right? like work experience. And now he's going, oh, we should start off with the stereophonics. I'm going trying oh, to tell you what to do. If I want anyone's opinion, I don't. <laughs> Basically. But you'd probably come to me, I imagine, wouldn't you? <laughs> before, I'd be the first person. Before Carl, yeah. I'd consult you, Steve. Thank so you. just keep it, just because he uh, was in a, was it, Pilkey's yeah, making mobile disc music? I cannot wait. I'm looking forward to this. I mean, I literally can't wait. Should we do it now? Well, I'm tempted to save it because I just want to mention to people um, that uh, they should be very excited because uh, it's going to be Carl's special night tomorrow. You excited, Carl? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is, yeah, um, uh, me and Steve, because we were nominated, we get a guest. For the Battle uh, Awards. Um, and it's, uh, it doesn't say guest, it actually says, um, you know, uh, partner. So I'm taking, um, my partner. And, uh, Steve's taking Carl. Yeah. But what Carl doesn't realise is, 
you will have to pretend you're his partner, otherwise you yeah. wouldn't be able to- Well, that's the whole thing. He says, is, is this your- is this really your partner? It's not just a guest. They have That's to, how it is. Neither we go in like that or we can't get in. You have to- you just have to be with him when you go up there. I mean, you have to- uh, d does yeah, he have to- you should, We should hold hands, but I think what we should do is just to make sure that there's nothing at all that, like, it's gonna go wrong, we should just do a little kiss. Just like- and just or, when we or, get or be seen sort of like cheek to cheek, just to show them that, yeah. you know, you're not- he's, he's Like not Elton just getting, John and David He's not just Smith. getting his mates in for a free meal, you are actually partners. No, I'm not- I'm not for that. Why not? Well, because we know we're not actually gay. No, but, but yeah, but so you, it's not a problem. You've come out of it looking quite good because you've got a good looking fella. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm meant to look like, you know, I mean, I'm not gay, but if I was, I don't think I'd go for your thing. Oh, he's done you, Steve! It's turned on you again! I cannot believe- We were trying to get in. Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. I have got the cream of London's totty <laughs> phoning me up trying to get an invite to the BAFTAs, yeah. right? We have very graciously asked you if you'd like to come along. Well, that yeah. worries me even more. That you've got women calling you up. <laughs> <laughs> Carl. Carl, I can't choose between them. If I let one of them down, I'm gonna- they're gonna destroy yeah. them. Is they, yeah. they'll, they'll be- they'll be ruined, their yeah. lives will be ruined. It's better for me to take you and not, you know, ruin the lives of any of those poor when, women. When- when he told them he was taking no. you, it was like a scene from Graceland. There was just like- There women, was weeping. They were crying. Like- It was horrible. Hundreds of them. And really? he just went- and I got he, upset. He just had to say, look, just chill out, bitches, didn't you? I did, I just said, you know, you're all my hoes, but yeah. I can't choose between you. So I'm taking Carl. So I'm taking Carl. You know he gets- he could get you a discount frocks. No, I had a letter from the people that there's a- No, no, he's good. no listen, Carl, there's an organisation that sponsors the BAFTA Awards yeah. in terms of clothes and fashion. They sent me a letter, they said your partner, they've not specified the sex, they've said your partner can come along and choose yeah. an outfit. Now I suspect- by the look of it, it is a woman's outfitters. I'm thinking we could get you a lovely trouser suit. Well, you have a it may look suit, feminine, right? But I think people will be fooled. It'd just, be, it'd just be a little bit roomy in the hip and that probably be... now on the shoulders. But you're a bit skinny. Why don't you take it? Because it's a lot of an insult. And maybe just some pearls as well. <laughs> be lovely. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't well, you? What? I haven't got anything sorted to wear yet. See, you're slagging me off. You're likely to be end up going in a tracksuit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but yeah, I don't know what we're talking about there. So we've got the film thing. <laughs> I don't know what we were talking the about. Film. What were you talking about earlier about glasses as well and Steve taking his glasses off? What was that? What are you saying that in front of him now for? Was it? Oh, was it an insult? It wasn't really an insult. Carl, what were you up to? No, what was it? I genuinely don't remember. I I genuinely don't remember. Well, I just right, Steve. I'm not. I'm not having a go. Right. Um. Just saying, our people. Um. It's a bit weird that you've got glasses because you've got a good pair of eyes on you. Right. <laughs> That- that isn't an insult. What were you talking about though? What was it- why did it you- It was the fact that people who wear glasses always look a bit weird without them on. It's- it's like, you know, they- they were- they should- they should wear glasses. I- okay, why did we get round to this? What was we talking about? What were we talking about? I don't know. I don't- I don't know. I don't know what that was. It sounds like an insult, even if it wasn't no, intended as well. It wasn't. It, it sounds wasn't. like an insult, Carl. <laughs> it does, yeah. No, it wasn't. I should listen. be like to punch you every time you insult me, though. No, but I'm not. Oh, I'm doing it. I'm going to give you a dead arm. Look, Steve, it's, it's, it's you. Like an you and even if it wasn't, you intended it to be one. What are you. <gasps> <gasps> oh, that was real. Play a record. Yeah, but it's that's mad. Every time you insult me from that's now. That's mad. Oh, is this the cardigans? Great. Brilliant. I didn't yeah. even say anything. It makes me feel better. It makes me feel better. I can enjoy the rest of the show. You went in. There was George Best, one of your footballing heroes was there, a that load of other good. big names. We- you sat there in a prime position, you came backstage with a load of other big names. Hey, you had a lovely bit of grub. You were filming this thing for the DVD we're making. That's you, that's you, a cameraman on our DVD. And yet you think, oh, and you- now you look grumpy because you had a couple of pints and you- Oh, I can't believe it. So tell it. us why you didn't enjoy it, because the ceremony, what didn't you enjoy about that? Far it was interminable, wasn't it? Far too long. Wasn't it awful? Three so boring. hours. I'm sorry. I thought you were going to say something. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Three hours. Yeah. Um, I mean, I suppose for you two, at least, you know, you were gonna get something. Sure. Yeah. But, <laughs> with me, it's like, I mean, I've never graduated or anything, so. Have you not? <laughs> I'm trying to think of, of a situation. Basically, I sat there three hours knowing that I'm not gonna get anything out of the night. Yeah. Right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> No did you- time. sorry, when we invited you and you said yes, did you think you were up for an award? No. <laughs> I thought- I thought we were gonna be sat round tables, having a nice yeah. bit of food, yeah. whilst people are going up there winning awards. Yeah. But three hours of the same thing over and over again, I mean, 
if a film's three hours in the cinema, yeah. you go, well, it's long, but, you know, I wonder how it's gonna end. Yeah. But this was just like the same <laughs> thing over <laughs> and over again. Some guy going up, thanks a lot, cheers for the bit of brass. And then going down, sitting down, the same thing over and over again. Mm. I wouldn't, I, honestly, right? I, I'd say it was one of the worst things I've ever had to do. Cry, <laughs> <laughs> Lincoln. No, I enjoyed the night afterwards when we did have a bit of lamb and a nice bit of veg and that. That was yeah. all right, and I went home and I was happy, and I got the the little freebie bag that you're talking about that we gave yeah. away. Yeah. Um, which wasn't much good stuff in it. Oh, oh all right. Right. No, what, Suzanne, what would you have done right. on that Saturday night? Suzanne what would you have done if, or the Sunday night rather, what would you have done had you been at home? I would have stayed in with Suzanne, right, watching telly, having a nice bit of pate on toast or something, cup of tea, watching 24, but instead I had to buy an expensive suit so I didn't show you up, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How much did you spend on your suit? Well, in total, right, because, you know, the shoes and the suit and the shirt and the tie, it was about 600 quid. <laughs> That's the most expensive evening ever. Uh, that's, well, that's what I'm saying to you. <laughs> and the daft thing is, it's dark in there. I don't know why you've got to wear a nice suit. You can't, you can't <laughs> wear a track suit, for it's goodness sake. It's dark in there. Oh, oh, uh, no, just the shirt and that. It doesn't oh. make you a better person wearing a suit. No, it doesn't you know make you a better mean? person, no. We're not uh, claiming it made you a better person. No, well, that annoyed me. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it, it was an experience, innit? That's why I went, because you think, if I didn't go, if I would have said to you when you invited me, no, Steve, I don't want to go, then I would have never known, right? Yeah. And yeah. I've, I've, uh, that, that's my sort of thing in life, right? Yeah. If yeah. something comes up, you should take it, even if you're not gonna like it, it's a bit of an experience. Right. And you know what he said to me? I phoned him up because we had to meet up, yeah. and obviously he had to pose as my, uh, gay lover. He yeah. Get in, right? Yeah. He phoned me, what do you said to me to me, like, I bought a suit, I'm looking good. He said, I'm looking good. People will think, how on earth did he end up with that good looking guy? <laughs> so he got into the yeah. role. That was what he said to me. He started getting into it. Such an insult. Fire record. Oh, okay. dear. So I'll just go back to insults briefly. Go on. You know, you're saying. <laughs> oh, no, no, I, uh, see that. Goofy, that's no, not. No, no, fair. no, because that's that's what he said. It's in my head. I, what I, do you mean he said no, that? When did he no, say that? No, no, I mean. When did, did you call me goofy? No, he didn't. I he mean, said about what's in my head. Hey, no, when it's. Come on. Come off it. Don't what? Who's calling me goofy? No. I'm not even goofy. Goggle eyes, fair enough. No, yeah, but you I can sort your look out. I can't. What do you mean I can sort? How can I sort my look out? I'm not even goofy. That's not fair. You've got the proper features. What? Just needs sorting out a bit. I can't help it if if my hair's not good. It, do you know what I mean? It's brilliant. I'd like to rent you out to people. See me, I'm different. <laughs> I would happily leave him now in the bottom of the cupboard. Mm. <laughs> Until quiz With the night. scale electrics. <laughs> <laughs> Until the old pub quiz night, when <laughs> there's no one else who will have you on the team. Sure. And oh, suddenly you want to be your best mate. Done him again. Huh? My, yeah, where's his mum and dad then, Carl? Mm. Yeah? In yeah. Bristol. Yeah. Me and Steve were having a little meeting yesterday over lunch about, you know, planning stuff for the show. And, uh, Gary Kemp came up to me, started having a little chat about old times, and, uh, I went, oh yeah. As he went away, Steve said, right, think of this, he said, Rick, don't take this the wrong way. Remember that sentence, don't take this the wrong way. So there's a right way and a wrong way I could have taken this comment. He went, nodded to sort of Gary Kemp and went, he's aged better than you. I went, well how could I take that the wrong way? Yeah. It's uh, not offensive. No. Well, the, the point is this. He, he does, because he didn't know me 20 years ago, so he's actually saying, Rick, don't take this the wrong way, he looks better than you do. Yeah, well he does. But why say that, Carl? What? Did you, did you really say that? Yeah, although, can I just get, just backtracking for a second, I love the fact you said you bumped into Gary Kemp and you reminisced about old times. What old times did you share with Gary Kemp? Well, no, Kemp? he came up and said, did we drop the pops together? I went, no, I did razzmatazz. He said, oh, we did razzmatazz. I think he was thinking, had he ever met me before? But he, he hadn't, because we hadn't, that's what I meant. Yeah. 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 And, uh. But if you had to make an objective analysis, I, I wouldn't. I think that's out of order. Sure. <laughs> sure. I mean, you're always slagging me off, but apparently no, you, you no, can't no, do, well, can't make a value judgment on something else. No. Wouldn't, wouldn't do <laughs> that. Well, because you're, you know, you're morally all over the place. You don't know, you, you know, you don't know where you're coming or going. Believe it. Yeah. Believe it. Sure. Yeah. You should hear what I say about you, behind your back. So, are you, would you say you're better looking now than you were? Or? <laughs> than I'm what? W would you say you're better looking now than you were? Than I was when? Well, like, like, you know, have you aged well? Yes. You've aged well. Yeah, I've kept my looks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> bit of dando? Bit of and dando, this would be lovely, yeah. Hello. Welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with Guardian Unlimited. Back where it all started. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And of course, Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm.
the internet phenomenon that is Carl Pilkington. Ah, now ah, this could be interesting. Now that noise, do you want to explain, Steve? I will. I've just sent a text to this number that some of you may have heard of, 63336. Now apparently this is a number you can uh, send a text to and it will answer any question that you have for it. And in the past, for instance, I sent it um, quite some quite profound questions. I once asked it, um, should they have dropped the second bomb on Nagasaki? And it had a very thoughtful answer. So we've sent it a question, perhaps equally thoughtful. Carl Pilkington believes in ghosts. Is he an idiot? Now, we sent that because this is the Halloween special. These podcasts are, are three one-off free specials, and they're free because we want to thank people who uh, who paid um, for the for the audio books we did, the uh, the last two series. So thank you for that. I've just bought a, a flat in New York, and Steve's just bought a lovely BMW. Mercedes. Oh, is it a Mercedes? Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah. Carl's have his kitchen done and his boiler replaced. He's still not happy. But, um, yes, thank you. Um, uh, the back catalogue is still available um, in audio books on iTunes, but these are three free ones. Anyway, the question we asked, 6336, Carl Pilkinson believes in ghosts. Is he an idiot? And this is the response. Unusually, producer Carl Pilkington is both an idiot and a comic genius. His humour is not to everyone's taste, however. That's amazing. <laughs> That's the response. But it's curious because it doesn't really answer our question about ghosts. Send them, do you believe in ghosts? Okay. This is the Halloween special, of course. That's why we're talking about ghosts. Carl, do you believe in ghosts? Uh, yeah. I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen, like, a proper proper ghost. So why do you believe in something that uh, there's no evidence for? Yeah, you but what, what, why are we here then? If, if it is just sort of, you're born, right? And when, I mean, we are useless, at least other creatures, when they're born. Well, you speak for yourself. No, but they're born, other creatures are born to do a job, aren't they? When a bee's born, you know what that's going to be doing. It hasn't got any <laughs> options. That's got a job to do. And it does that job and it dies and the next one comes along. Oh. We asked it, do you believe in ghosts? The existence of ghosts is not proven. Many experiments have claimed to identify ghosts, but none have been scientifically sound. Excellent. See, yeah, that, 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 just, that, that's, but that, that's a sensible, intelligent, logical, thoughtful answer. Weird things have happened to me when uh, mm. I was living at home and I uh, was in bed one Where night. Where do you live now? No, but I was at my first home. Your mm. parents? Yeah, my mum and dad's. Mm. So I'm in bed and uh, I'm lying there. Do you know you get that sense of like, uh, oh, there's something going on, right. and uh, I sort of look over my quilt, and there's nothing there. Thinking it's weird that, so uh, turn me back on it. I'm thinking I don't want to know if there is something there. <laughs> I don't want to know. Right? <laughs> so I'm turning me back on it, but then there's like a really high pitched noise, right? Sort of the hairs on my back are like going up a bit, and I'm like, oh, I don't like this. And it's the, the high pitched noise. Yeah, the hairy back even as a kid. No, but you know, Not everyone's got little hairs on them, aren't they? Everyone's got little tiny hairs on them and mm. stuff. And uh, and I thought, oh, I can't stand this. And, and I turned around, put the light on, legged it downstairs. Mm. Right? And my mum's saying, what are you doing? I'm going, oh, I don't know, there's something up there. So she said, all right, then watch the telly. So I stayed up for a bit, mm. uh, watching the telly. Went back to bed, the high-pitched noise had gone. Went to sleep. Get up the next day. Charlie from next door comes round. He goes, Hilda's dead. Mm. Right? And... Uh, my dad said, oh, when did that happen? He said, last night at quarter to eleven. Right. That's, that's when I was in bed. So? What, what are you telling me for? Because it's weird, isn't it? It's that thing of, uh, would, would, would you think it'd be weirder that, uh, no one ever died at quarter to eleven when you were in bed? No, but that's when all the weirdness was going on. That's when the tone was happening, my back was getting itchy and stuff, and- Coincidence. And I went down and watched telly, went back up, gone and that, but that's when her spirit had sort of... No, no. Ah, okay, right, interesting. No, this, this is where we get into the facts. So Hilda's spirit... Had left was whizzing round, whizzing round my yeah. bedroom, because my bedroom was right next door to theirs. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So I'm just saying, that's, that's one. Why, that's did they, why do they whiz round when they, when they die? Why do spirits whiz round when they die? Because they're going, where am I going? Are they? Right, and they're whizzing round, aren't they? Am I going down? Am I going up? No, no, it's Carl. Oh, no, no, but I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, but it's n it's not going to be easy, is it? How do you think it works? It doesn't work. But once again, it's not proof of anything, Carl. Mm. Beyond the fact that you were a child in bed. Why did your dad ask what time she died? 
No, it, it just sort of, you know, what do you say to someone when it's it's awkward, isn't it? When someone gives you bad news, so you just think, well, what can I ask? Oh, what time, oh, what time, time exactly? does that happen? Sorry? No, just, what, you just what, go, oh, exactly what, what time did she die? Uh, my no, wife, my wife passed away. Yeah, what, what time is that? Exactly? <laughs> no, not exactly, you just said, no. oh, oh, that's bad, when did that happen? Like, what mm. time? And he said, well, thanks for asking. Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven, I remember What did they say, what did they say last night? Oh, that's weird, isn't it? Convenient, aren't they, all these it stories? Is, or is it, or, yeah, I mean, it's either that's exactly what happened, Rick, or mm. he's, he's misremembering the, the yeah, actual yeah. I, don't, I don't, I don't know which one <laughs> to plump for. But, I'll tell you this, though. Go on. You know, if we're talking about ghosts and that. Yeah. Mm. Now, Ilda. Yeah. Uh, choose your bog standard old woman. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I think that's on the gravestone. Yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> no, did you, just, did you do the eulogy? No, you know. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> you, you what can we that? say about Ilda? <laughs> Bog standard old woman. Right, there's sandwiches at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most insulting thing you could ever say. There's nothing you know. <laughs> Let's just think about it. Hilda that lived her life. <laughs> Thank you for coming to celebrate the life of Hilda. Who died at quarter to eleven specifically. And was a bog standard old woman. <laughs> Are we burning or burying? But anyway, but she lived to be quite old. Mm. Which annoyed you. And, but, yeah, no, in a bog-standard way. Well, this is what I was saying about us all living too long and stuff. Mm. It just, it just makes it worse when it does come to us being a ghost. I don't know what you're talking don't about, about again. That sentence made no sense. Just, if you are gonna be haunted, right, say, I know you're gonna say, well, I don't believe in them, so I'm not worried, so don't be going on about it. Mm. But say, like, you know, your new place that you've bought, you move in, and you go to bed, and there's something moving about the room. Mm. You see it, mm. it's a ghost. Oh no. Okay, no, let, let's, for the sake More of argument. More likely, a Siamese cat called Ollie. No, because that's probably got its own room, right? <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is, would you prefer to have an old person moving about looking at you, or just a young person? I'd prefer a youngish person who looks normal and he's sort of floating about and you go, oh, right. That That looks normal, floating about. No, but, but, an old woman would really scare me. Some ghosts are always gonna have a bad reputation because they look scary because they're old. So that's- You talk absolute shit. That's all I'm saying, so- Can we're you now believe going... we ever charged for this? No, but look, <laughs> if, if we are going into another life, right, after this- Which we're not- We move yet. on to another life. Yeah. We're not gonna move on. That land, say if it is like another world, where we go and we plough fields and we grow crop- it, crop- Croppage. We grow crop. Crops. Uh, crops, if you want. Yeah, um, well I would like to use the English <laughs> language. <laughs> no, there's, there's too much fruit about, so just a crop. Just something we need too to get back. Fruit to vote. <laughs> <laughs> He's got an answer for everything. That's so we grow some crop. Yeah. yeah. So you grow your crop and uh, now if we're all going into that other land or world or universe, mm. old, who's gonna do the cropping? <laughs> <laughs> God! Oh! You- I, I've never heard so much crop in my life. <laughs> it's a load of old crop. I, I had to go for a- an ultrasound, right? Isn't that what you do if you're pregnant? Yeah, but the- the- do you know I've had kidney stones? Are you expecting? We've talked about it in the, in the other podcast and that, that we've done, right? Uh, I've had a kidney stone, I don't want to go on about it. Uh, but it hurt, it's painful and that. Well, you are going on about it. Yeah, yeah and there's no, nothing. No, I'm just saying. It's routine, don't worry about it's it. It's not routine. Well, uh, well, why do they have to keep going back then? Why do they have to keep going back? You're, you're yeah. questioning me. You're getting into a routine, keep going back. It's better than working, isn't it? You don't have to promote you know, sell the book. No, no. Holiday or hospital? Holiday or hospital? Holiday or hospital? I don't know. I just say that we've got a book out, right? The World of Car Pilkington. It's, it's, it's out now. When he goes on holiday the first week, right? Uh, he, he, he's in and out of hospital. He's doing no good. He's got to go in again. He goes away with his family like twice a year. He goes away with Suzanne's family twice a year. Oh. He's now said he doesn't want to do any press for it because it's boring or he doesn't want- why don't you- why don't you plug in the book? Well, I mean if you- if you're an author, you've got to put- I've, get behind I've it. bought books without hearing someone telling me to buy stuff. No, you're- you la you're stuff. lazy. You're no, lazy. I'm, I'm not lazy. It's just that I'm sick and tired of putting telly on or the radio and having people telling me, oh you've got to buy this, you've got to buy that. No, I don't have to do anything. I'll have a look myself when I'm in a bookshop. Let them just find it. But there are hundreds and thousands of books, Carl. They may not find it. Well, just You're trying to look. direct them towards it. I'm, I don't want to direct them to it. I just, you know, if you come across it. But most why of have the you books... put all this work into this book? All these illustrations you've done in extra material. Because I enjoyed it for me. Right, but you don't want anyone to read it. Yeah, so why just put it in a drawer? They will, they will read it. They'll they'll find it. People will find it. It's in the shop, isn't it? 
I'm always finding little books on different things and what have you. Yeah, you don't read them. You read the first couple of lines and you get it wrong. What, you know, it, it- So I went back, right, and I had the, uh, the ultrasound thing where they, they look in to see what else is in there. Mm. Uh, and, uh, when I was in the waiting room, there was a woman there. I reckon she was about 98. <laughs> <laughs> now, That's why, old. why are they rooting around in her? To see what's up with her, just let her let her die. Do you know what I mean? If she's not in any Jesus. pain, no, no. All Such I'm saying, I'm just saying, how long does she want to be around? And the, the the problem is, she went off. Right, I was sat in the waiting room. She went off into the little cubicle to put her uh, a gown on, and because she's old, she can't bend her arms and that. So she came out with it all open <laughs> on the back, <laughs> and it was horrible. It looked like like a a chicken that hasn't been looked after, right? <laughs> it was all leathery skin and that, right? Now the thing <coughs> is, it's all very well keeping people alive, but the surroundings of the body isn't meant to be lasting that long, is it? Do you know what I mean? The actual skin of, of a body, it's all very well keeping the heart going, checking the kidneys and all that, but we're not meant to be around this length of time. Yet we are, we're messing with it. Yeah. Just do the gown up. You never do, you never get you, you never see insects or anything like that that look old. You don't go, look at the state of that. Because <laughs> they live about four weeks! Yeah, but maybe that's the way it's meant to be, in the same way we- maybe we were only meant to live to be 40. But why did you go in for your operation then? Why didn't you just think, well, this is it, I've had my time. If they're looking after an old woman who's about 98, I'm having a go. <laughs> well, of you course! Because you want to live on. She, she might have been flirting that. with you. No, she was- Keeping it open, just so you can have a little look. But I'm just saying, is that right? Is it right that you are going in around? there rooting around and stuff? I didn't like it. I didn't like having it done, you know? I don't like going to the hospital and stuff and the doctors and all that. And she was pushing the, uh, the thing down. And she said, oh, you can have a look if you want. So what, what down where? On, on my kidney, she was pushing, like, this little scanner thing. Oh, right. She was going to have a look. I was going, I don't want to have a look. She's going, what's up with you? I said, I don't want to see me inside. So did they have a Did they put a tube down the end of your knob? Yeah, they did all that. Well, we've talked about that in the, in the other... But you're unconscious, books. weren't you? Uh, yeah, but it doesn't matter, does it? If you know it's going on, it still bothers you. It's because you're asleep. Well, not really, no. What do you mean? Well, why does it bother you if you're asleep? Well, that's like saying, oh, I woke up and the house was robbed. Oh, it doesn't matter, you're asleep. Well, no, but- It's still gonna bother you, innit? <laughs> no, but, no, but you knew it was happening and you- you did it willingly. What? It's not pleasant to go in and be made to go unconscious. That's the unpleasant bit, isn't it? And uh, pain. And well, no, it's more it, the idea of it, isn't it? That's why you know doctors telling you everything they're doing. It's like, don't tell me. You know what you're doing. Just do it. I'm well, not yeah, going to have a go at it. You know, it's not like DIY people coming around and going, oh, what you should have done there is, and you can go, oh, I'll have a go at that next time on my own without calling you out. Forget kidney stones again. I'm not going to go. Oh, I've had it done before. I know what to do. I'll stick it up there. Doesn't happen, does it? But I can't. What was the saying? <laughs> so anyway, so she she was pushing the the scanner over yeah. me kidneys and stuff. Yeah. Now, it was weird with her. Because at no point did she make eye contact with me. Well, I don't understand what that means. Well, she meant to wink and go, your kidneys are fucked. <laughs> no, yeah. but it's, ju it's just weird that she probably spends her days looking inside people more than she does talking to people. I just thought it was odd. That she, that's, that's how she sees people. When she looks at people, she probably sees kidneys. What, well, this doctor? The woman doctor. Well, doctor. Uh, yeah. Right. So, what you're saying is, the strange thing is that she often spends more time looking in people, because she's a doctor, than chatting to them. Yeah. And I is just... it weird that Jonathan Ross is the other way around, because he's a chat show host, he spends more time talking to people than looking inside them. No, but even when I was asking- Because he's got a different job. <laughs> when I was asking her questions, saying, uh, you know, does it look alright? Uh, what's it doing? Is it moving about? You know, asking her questions about my kidney, she could have quite easily just turned around and, and give me a bit of eye contact. But she, she was, say, looking, she was looking. I'm but concentrating. But she I'm was looking work. at the screen in order to answer your questions. Yeah, she's at work. She's doing something. No, but just if she was here now, going, Carl, what are you doing with that microphone? You'd go shut the fuck up. I'm doing a podcast. Did she run this scanner over your head? <laughs> <laughs> and if so, did she find anything? <laughs> we like to try and educate Carl, Rick, as, you know, as we have done since we've known him really, and mm. he doesn't really seem to absorb any information. No. And, um, and I, I was asked recently, when I was going back to Bristol, if I would come and talk to a classroom of school children. Oh, right. 
you know, just talking about careers and particularly my career. And uh, I went down there. It was in Bristol. It was an inner city school, quite rough area. You're a son of Bristol. You're uh, exactly. They love you. You're down a there, celebrated right? son of Bristol. You've done. You're a Golden Globe winning uh, person who's returned to the homeland. It annoys me when I go down there that I'm not met as I get off the train like the Beatles used to be when they came back from America. By a know? mayor and a brass band. Hordes of people, ticker tape. Forever this day will be called Steve <laughs> Merchant Day. <laughs> exactly. It frustrates me that I just sneak back into town and there's no yeah. fanfare. <laughs> yeah. But um, basically they asked me to, to come talk at this school and I sort of batted them away and said I'm too busy. And so um, they, I foolishly left them uh, the opportunity to, to ask me again, which they did, and I didn't have a decent excuse, so I went. And I was expecting to talk to maybe a room of six formers. Um, they were nine, <laughs> these kids, nine, nine and ten years old. But I realised as I was walking into the school, I was suddenly really nervous. I was more nervous than anything I've ever done. Because I realised that I've not spoken to a child like that since I was a child myself. I just, I've never interacted with them. So I didn't know at what level I would be able to pitch this, this talk. You know, I didn't know what they understood, what ideas they understood. Obviously, in my mind, I was picturing Carl. And yeah. then I was ratcheting it up a few years sort of IQ-wise. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I went so there, what did you talk to them about? And I was talking about careers, and I realised very quickly that they didn't really understand conceptual Did they know who you were? Not really. One or two of them may vaguely knew. One of them went, what's Richard Rage like? And I said, um... you got a deep voice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, that was one of the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And, um, <laughs> and, uh, I'm supposed to be talking about careers, how to get into careers. And I start trying to explain the idea of being a writer, and I say that it's very important to be able to get inside other people's minds, you know, figure out how they think, and how, you know, and try to understand other people. But this, they didn't really seem to grasp. They started talking amongst each other. You know, they were just losing interest. <laughs> I lost them straight away. I was devastated. <laughs> oh, no. So then, and this is the worst thing, right? I started lying to them. Because <laughs> <laughs> I realised that every time I told a slight lie, because I thought they'd be interested. That's they were. Great. So I, I know Justin like, Timberlake. You're not joking, right? They said, one of them said, I understand you used to be a DJ. And I went, yeah, it's great being a DJ because you get to meet pop stars like Robbie Williams and Beyonce. Never met either of them. <laughs> <laughs> Never met them. And, I, and they went, one of the kids went, what's Beyonce like? <laughs> and I went, and I went, joking, I went, you wouldn't like her. And I said, <laughs> I said, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. She's, yeah. lo she's lovely, she's sweet, she's good as gold. I was making it up. Oh, and, but God. they were loving this, and the teacher was going, oh. would you all like to meet Beyonce? And they were going, yeah. And I was thinking, God, well. We'll bring her, I'll bring her down tomorrow. <laughs> well, exactly, but I don't know why I felt the, it was like I wanted to win the approval of these nine-year-olds. That's amazing! Because my own achievements, I realised, wouldn't mean anything to them. You know, I could yeah. talk about the people I have met, but they don't care if I've met Robert De Niro, but they're interested if I've met Girls Aloud. <laughs> Well, me and girls led some of the times we've had together, it turns out. <laughs> but uh, it is fascinating when you have to interact with, with people, with children like that, because I've got no concept of how to talk to children. I don't, to me, I can't grasp the difference really in conversation and chat between, say, a seven-year-old and a 13-year-old. I don't know at what point they learn stuff and pick stuff up. Do they understand, do you know what I mean? It's, I find it really hard. I remember hard. once when I was about nine, uh, the... The, the headmaster, Debbie Headmaster, used to do a little fable. I've talked about him in stand-up, he used to do a little fable. There's uh, uh, one I remember where um, he uh, got a tube of toothpaste and he got someone up, he said, uh, you, um, come out here, squeeze this tube of toothpaste out on this board. And he squeezed it all out, right? And he squeezed it all out and emptied it. He went, now put it back in. And the kid tried to struggle and he goes, you can't do it. He said, it's easier to do something than undo it. <laughs> okay, go back to class. <laughs> like people are going, oh, I get it. I know what he means. Yeah, yeah. And they're just thinking, don't squeeze all the toothpaste out. Yeah. Just save some. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, there's there's no way they're going to take on <laughs> no, that exactly. metaphor at the it's age too of nine. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just stop misbehaving, or I'll <laughs> smack you. That worked. Carl, have you had to have any dealings with kids? How do you get on with kids? Do you relate to them, or are they just as angry and perplexed by your views as we are? Uh, I mean, it's with everything, isn't it? Everyone's different and that. I can get on with some young kids, all right, and some of them are, like, you know, a bit cocky and what have you. But, um, I'm sort of getting on with a baby at, at the moment, because, uh, I've been made a, like, a, a godfather. Think of that. So, uh... Wow, who did they reject? I know. No, I mean, it, it, Who said no? Yeah. Well, well I did. No? I did at first. And Brilliant. then Suzanne said, look, you're not, you know, it's not really a choice. It's not like a job interview or something that you're thinking about. Is it a good thing? So you, you've, you've been asked. You should take it on. But what, are they, what if they, hold on. If you're the godfather of this yeah. kid, presumably you're friends with them and they probably listen yeah, to this yeah, podcast. Good so now they're hearing for the first time that you didn't want to be 
Godfather. Yeah, but I think I think that's good because they can hear that you know it wasn't. I didn't just do it because I was asked. I thought about it. I thought it through. Um, you know, I, I was worried. It was kind of like, is this a job? And uh, I was I was just. Well, it's nothing but tokenistic, is it? You're not. Well, really this is what I looked into. I said we went back and I said right. I've been thinking about this thing. Uh, I've heard that it's my job. If anything happens to them, I've got to kick in and I'd have to start looking after the baby. So I said right. How many of you are in your family? If that happens, am I going to start getting a phone call or what? And they said, no, there's a big family, you're not, you know, you're at the bottom of the list. So I was like, how many? And just finding out what their age is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, I've only got a small flat, it would have to sleep in the sink or something, right? So I checked all that out and, uh, all safe. So this, uh, this baby, it's spooking me out a bit because it doesn't blink. <laughs> And that's pretty weird when you're sort of talking to it and you're thinking, it's not blinking. Are you sure it's not asleep? No, it's honestly, it's weird. If something doesn't blink, it's like it's it's evil. Because blinking just makes something look a bit more friendly, doesn't it? <laughs> and I was stood there, you know, talking to it. I just tell it little stories about anything. Uh, it's lying there looking up at me. How old is it? It's about, must be about two and a half months. Well then, why are you telling it stories? Because it likes it. But it's just weird how, like, then I'll, I'll sort of forget the story because I'm looking at it going, it's not blinked yet. It's been about <laughs> ten minutes, it's not blinking. <laughs> so then I forget the end of the story and I just walk away because it's not bothered anyway, it's probably not listening, is it? But <laughs> what a pointless tale! What a pointless tale <laughs> now and at the time. I think it likes it. The kids like stories, like you say, they're not bothered if it's if it's not true or anything. Or if you walk away before the ending because you've forgotten it. That's Brilliant. why it's not blinking. It's so dumbstruck at the idiocy coming out of your gob. No, but you don't need to wear endings of stories. Maybe, like I said that's to you- That's the point. That's the point of a story, isn't no, it? No, it's not. That's the point why people- that's why people like stories, because they're hooked into knowing what happened. No, because there's loads of films that happen and they have a funny ending. You leave there going, I wonder what's meant to happen, and then you make it up in your own head. You go, well, I bet what happened is that person went off and got married to that woman, mm. and they lived. Happy. And then in your head, it's the truth. It's actually what happened. But but I think that's better. Why are we told everything? Because so what would your end be to a story such as the Elephant Man? Okay, he's rescued from the freak show. He's put in the hospital. He becomes something of a celebrity. Then what happens? He discovered he had big ears and he could fly, and he 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 joined the circus and he was the the main attraction. Um, I wouldn't change, change the end that much because at the end of the day, you can't, you can't make something up that's not believable. At the end of the day, he's got an head like an elephant. He's not going to have a good life, is he? Mm. So there's no point making out that he went on loads of women fancied him, and you know he, he modelled hats. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so, so he's got to die. The elephant man had to die, yeah. but at the same time, was shot by poachers. Just show, just for show, his, a, for his task. A, show a few positives. You know, because I'm sure there was good bits in his life. I don't know what they were, but you know, look, look at everything. Uh, what was he like when he was a little baby elephant? They didn't cover what he was like as a kid. But you can get away with them sort of looks when you're a baby. You can be an ugly baby, and everyone goes, "Oh, isn't it nice?" There was some woman in a cafe the other week mm -hmm. that I was sat in, and she came up and she sat down with a mate, and she was talking loudly, going on about, "Oh, the baby's lovely." They said it's got uh, it's got lovely big eyes. Uh, really big hands and feet. Now that doesn't sound like a nice baby to me. <laughs> I felt like saying it sounds like a frog, but I thought I don't know her. There's only there's only so much you can say to to a stranger. I don't know what kept kept me from saying it. That's what I was saying before about there's something in, there's something. It sounds like a frog. There's something inside of you that stops you. Yeah, that's amazing that you had the urge to go. Oh, that doesn't sound like a good baby. What, love? I'm just listening to the conversation. <laughs> that baby you're talking about sounds like a fucking frog. Um, <laughs> yeah. But something stopped him saying it. <laughs> I just came back from uh, America and uh, they love Halloween. They're over obsessed there. over there. I mean, it's a, it's a proper, proper thing out there. Here it's sort of half hearted, a few people, a few middle class families sort of. Uh, but do you, you think know, it'll get up. more popular here, though, if we do find out that ghosts are about? Well, that would that never happen because they're not. No, okay? but if they did, then but suddenly that would be a big. Well, be Ameri a big thing. America makes things famous now um, because of because of film culture and everything. So yeah, it's it's all it's all 
it's all from that. I, I, I doubt we uh, celebrated much at all, did we, 50 years ago. So I think it's crept oh, up. Oh, certainly over here we didn't. But it's no. been largely introduced over here through commercial ideas, isn't it? Let's yeah, put, We can yeah. sell stuff for home. And, and film and, and, and things like that. And, uh, but um, out there, it's it, it was, they, they start like weeks and weeks before and they're decorated like proper, proper. And um, But I saw a baker's, a little bakery in, um, in, in Soho, um, and uh, it didn't look right with cobwebs all over it and spiders on the buns. Yeah. And but even though it's fake, it just it's just I don't think you should do it on a bakery. It, do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I mean, it's it, a bit think, well, that, that's, that surely puts you off mm. the the product a little bit. I, I always know. find it a bit depressing. Like last time, I remember going into supermarkets and you see sort of these old women who who you know in their sixties and they're doing this job they don't really want to be doing, but they've been made to dress up. As a hat, I know. As a witch or as, as Cinderella, and it just... Well, they could do it, it in, like, a morgue or something, just to sort of... Brighten up the place. Well, just so people aren't that scared. Imagine that. Imagine you're going to identify your your your, your dead relative, and they go, what's the spiders all over? It's uh, 31st October. No, oh, but, okay. But just make it a bit spookier and have a bit of fun with it, and let's not get serious about, you know, like I say, passing on. Yeah, but, but those sort of people have to take their job seriously. I remember when um, my mum died, and um, uh, I had to go along, and I was talking about um, uh, the what wreath they wanted, and this this person, uh, quite rightly, had to turn off their sense of humour in a way because I suppose they're so they mustn't offend anyone. So I had to. He spoke like that at all times. <laughs> yeah. At all times. Okay, and what what um, would you like the wreath to say? Um, she was a mother and a, a, a grandmother. I went, yeah, my uh, mother, grandmother, and, and uh, what was her name? I said, uh, her name was um, Eva. I said, um, and I made a joke. I said, do we get a discount because her name's short? And she went, well, actually, um, didn't laugh, didn't, didn't get yeah. that at all. She just went, yeah. just answer the question. She went, well, actually, you pay by the letter. I thought, okay, that fell flat. I'll go again. I went, well, uh, a friend used to call her E. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I went, I went, I'm joking. She went, okay. Nothing. Yeah. Bad audience. <laughs> bad yeah. time, bad audience. Tough crowd. Yeah, undertakers, so, never known for their... Yeah, um, exactly, yeah. Their they language. don't crack jokes, Carl. A, f a, f a friend of mine um, was um, tra trained to be a doctor, and um, in his first year, uh, when they actually they practice, they intern at the, the hospital, um, he was watching this patient, and... Uh, Two other doctors came in, and I won't say his name. Um, they said, uh, "Can you um, can you go and check on Mr. So and So?" He went, "Yeah," and changed his drip. So he went in, changed his drip, came back out. The doctors came after about ten minutes. They came running and said, "What did you do? What did you do?" And uh, they went in there and said, "I just changed the drip." He goes, "Well, he's dead. He's dead." He was going, well, "I just changed the drip. I did this and that." And they started laughing. He goes, "No, he was dead when we sent you in there." Yeah. Now, that is almost excusable because it's imperative if you're a doctor Absolutely. to become accustomed to yeah. Yeah. the fact that people die and that it's... Exactly. You know, yeah, it's so, that, so they were making a joke about a, a dead body that means nothing to them other than professionally. Yeah. You know, they were getting through it. He thought he'd just murdered someone. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, he thought he'd just killed someone. Um, but yeah, they have to be desensitised. But they wouldn't do that in front of the relatives. They wouldn't go... I had a laugh earlier with a young <laughs> yeah. intern. Um, when your dad died, we sent him in to change the drip. Didn't even check. <laughs> it was quite good. Anyway, let's get him out of here. No, but they do. But they do have a laugh. I heard about a doctor who was uh, working on a brain, right? Mm. Um, and apparently, when they work on the brain, it's best just to keep you awake because um, you know, just so you can go, that hurts a bit, and they go, oh, we best not touch that bit again. <laughs> That's right? the reason. Rick. Amazing. That's the reason. No, there it's is amazing. Certain, there's certain operations, isn't there, where they go, you know. We can knock you out for that, but for this one, we want to know. It's probably because the awake. brain needs activity. to be active in order to. Yeah, yeah, activity, thing, yeah, but yeah sure, yeah. No, so it's anyway. actually so you can wake up and go, yeah, no, that hurt. That, that stings. Hell, oh, that stings. Don't pop that in there. You can't feel anything in the brain anyway. No nerve endings. Really? You what? can't can't feel it, can you? Well, maybe there's another reason. But anyway, his head's open. He's sat on this chair. Um, the doctor's going. I reckon and, he was laying down. I thought he was laying down, but in your world, he's not. He's sat on a hard backed. I think it's more like chair. in front of a mirror, like a hairdresser type thing, right? <laughs> and he's cut the skin off. Uh, the like, go yeah, get a bit shorter there. So he's, he's so for the weekend, sir. He's, oh, I won't be shagging with no brain. <laughs> anyway, so he's he's cut the skin off, 
and uh, you know chopped a bit. And you're always, you're always going to get bits, aren't you? Sort yeah. of whenever you cut anything, you end up with a bit missing. <laughs> but anyway, somehow it's it, it, it does the brain stuff. It fixes it. I don't know what he was doing. But if, don't, yeah. if you don't know it, about. You don't, know, you about don't that. know the intricacies of brain surgery. That I find perplexing. So you're not a neurosurgeon. I don't, I don't want. Oh, okay, so they on. sorted out the problem, right? Mm. And he goes, right. All we've got to do now is uh, stick the uh, the head bit back on. Yeah. Um, That's what it's called, by the way. The oh, head this bit. happened. This happened. Yeah. The head bit's connected to the <laughs> face bit. Yeah. So he sticks. Nurse, it. head bit. <laughs> Doctor, do you need leg bit? Not yet, nurse. Head bit, then leg bit. So they stuck the, the head bit back on, and then uh, <laughs> can you pass me the sharpie, sharpie thing? He was trying to sew it, and he was going, "This isn't fitting this." He's going, I don't know, and and you know, like because the person right. If this turns out that it's <laughs> someone else's head, or no, 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 a, no. a toupee from the doctor next to him, <laughs> yeah. or a cat, <laughs> meow, no, you've sewn a cat to my brain. It's none of that. He's trying to sew it, and he's thinking, why isn't it fitting? And he's thinking, is it because the head's swollen? Because you know he's been messing about in it, and things yeah. swell, don't they? And messed about yeah. with. So he's messing with it. He's going, I don't, I don't understand this, and he's panicking a bit because the patient's awake and chatting and stuff, and mm. you know what, it's difficult to have a normal chat when you're panicking a little bit. I know. Bit. There's a queue as well. People want their brain done. You know, they're, they're reading old copies of magazines. They're going, hurry up. So <laughs> I'm going out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to wash it? No, no, no. Just uh, I'll wash it later. Just, just, just <laughs> take it off. Do the brain. Put it back on. Anyway, what happens is he mm. has to start rubbaging. <laughs> it's a start rummaging. Sort of rummaging. 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 No! There's no N before the first G. Rummaging. Well, he starts looking through the, uh, he starts having to look through the bin. Because, oh, what? Because he's, he knows he's chucked a bit away of the skin. Right. Oh, where is good. this surgery <laughs> where a bloke's sitting up in front of a mirror and there's a bin? Is there a little basketball ring above the bin as well, so when he throws things it goes through there first? I'm just saying that's what happened and you were saying about things that happen you, and you've got a joke about so it. So he's rummaging and what, what happens? He said to him, he said the, the fellow was starting to sense the nervousness and he said, what's going on here? And he says, oh, I'm never going to believe it, I've, I've lost a bit of your skin. Lost a bit and, of your uh, head, yeah. I can't Why is so he cut, I don't understand, why is there... Why That's is it in what two I mean. Bits? Because because things just break up, don't they? It's like chicken. When you see him walking around, everything's in place and it sticks together. You cook it, suddenly it all breaks up. He, he, he cooked his face before he <laughs> cut it out. I'm just saying how how flesh it sticks together well. Yeah, when he'd, he'd, he'd cooked the scalp before he'd taken it off his no, head. No, but it's just an example of how oh, skin okay. can break up with the muscles and everything. So he's rum he's rummaging in the bin, and does he find the head? He found the bit, and then he's like, "Oh, sorry about that." And he, he sort of managed to stick it on. Right, he didn't stuff. wash it off or anything. Yeah, I'm sure he gave it a bit of a rinse. But um, <laughs> but I'm just saying now. Nonsense. You know, you've got to make a joke out of stuff, haven't you? Yeah, it's bollocks. If you're a doctor. Okay, that's good. So where was the joke in that story? At what point did- when- I thought this was a story well, about how jo doctors have a sense of humour. Yeah, when well, did he make a joke? Yeah, they sort of laughed and he sort of said, oh, there you go, it's back on, but oh, f good job we- you know, the bin men didn't come or whatever. <laughs> and, they, and they made a joke out of it. I've never heard <laughs> such nonsense! I've, I've never heard such that joke nonsense. Up. Oh, shit, bad that he's only gone and written it down. The jingle there to announce a yet another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. Um, when are you going to write until, Carl? What have you got? You're going to do. I've got to do as until far as December, and then that's it. Uh, I don't know. When does the diary end? Thirty-first of December, usually. Yeah. Do it typical, there. always the same. <laughs> yeah, that's that's when I'll do it till, and then. Uh, why do that? Why just? Why be conformist? Why? Why end on December? Why not end on January the thirty-first? Weird that you should go. Don't be constrained to what the diary Please. says. Me mam called me to ask me to like. Fuck me, you're right. That like, look, that should be. Me mam called me to ask me to look in some of the magazine shops in London for a magazine that she can't find. It's called UFO Data. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I ain't heard of it. She said she's seen an advert for it in one of her ghost magazines. I love the fact that she can't even find the magazine about unidentified <laughs> flying objects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we get uh, we get a clue she there. thinks I think I saw something, but I don't know whether it was a magazine or not. <laughs> <laughs> so we get uh, we get a clue there as to why you you uh, give any credence to this crap. Yeah, well, it's oh, you know, I mean, Mama Pilkington's into the same shit. There's a lot of space out there, isn't there? Mm. She said that this magazine has got new story about how Aldrin brackets astronaut has got some evidence that aliens exist. Yeah. I told her that I found out today that the days are about 36 minutes longer on Mars. We chatted about how this is how they are more advanced than us. Do you mean the Martians? Yeah, if they've, if they've got a longer day, that's more time that they're awake working on stuff. Right, yeah, we know that makes no difference at all. No, it does. Think about it. Think yeah. about it. Look, think about it. 
six o'clock here, yeah. people are going, see you tomorrow, I'm going home. They'll be going, oh, another <laughs> half hour. They've got a longer day. Productive. <laughs> and that's why they're able to fly. That's why they're whizzing around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's oh, over the years. Christ almighty, what drivel! Suzanne got in from work at 11.30. I told her about the UFOs in <laughs> Mars. <laughs> she said she's too tired to chat. I said, does it mean aliens will be more tired than us, or do they get more sleep? I got no answer. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when it Suzanne goes in. She never indulges no, you. No, it scares she... her. Anything with ghosts and UFOs, she sort of... It doesn't scare it her, does it bores scare her. her. <laughs> no, it freaks her out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm knackered today and the face feels dry and spotty. <laughs> oh god, what's wrong? Oh, it starts off! It starts <laughs> off moaning! The first thing he does is start moaning! He wakes up and goes, oh fuck me, I didn't die. <laughs> oh, oh god! I'm knackered today and the face feels dry and spotty. I think it's the change in water since being away. Or it could be all the f <laughs> it could be all the Madeira cake I had yesterday. <laughs> I'm gonna burst. <laughs> that was I'm the Madeira burst. cake. The Madeira, Madeira cake dries you out, does it? <gasps> well, it's just quite fattening, isn't it? But I like it. It's one of my little pleasures. <laughs> oh God, put, I went for a wander about to try and find the UFO data magazine for my mum. Mm. I didn't know which category to look under. There were too many magazines. I noticed how on the rude magazines the women are being pretty rude on the cover, but on the gay magazines it's just a fella <laughs> smiling, <laughs> showing a bit of arse. <laughs> I don't know why gay blokes would buy it. Blokes have got their own knob to look at if they like knobs. <laughs> 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 Why were you looking at the game magazine? No, I wasn't. It's just. Oh, you were. No, I, I well, you studied them. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I was looking for UFO data. I don't yeah. know where they put it. <laughs> I don't think you find evidence where the world's down men's pants. Yeah, I don't think you want to boldly go where no man has ever gone before, Carl. I had no luck trying to find the UFO data magazine. I will try some other shops. <laughs> he rather than he writes UFO data magazine every time. <laughs> he can just put UFO mag. But no, no, but it, it you reminds me. Right. You it sort of, yeah. If I write stuff down, it means that I remember it more. Sure. Oh, still looking for it. Got some posts from Oxfam. They're flogging animals for Africa again. They've got new animals in their catalogue now. They've got donkeys and alpacas. Donkeys 50 quid, alpacas 20 pounds. I don't know if this is a special rate or if I could get one from a ma'am. She's been saying how they've been missing having a pet since they had the cat put down. Sorry, you don't get it. If you buy that for someone, you don't get it. Yeah, but they're not bothered where they're going. Yes, they do. Of course, they don't. They don't. They don't deliver them. It's not like they're in a warehouse wondering, uh, people, thinking, "I oh, hope people buy this." They're going to put them out there. Yeah. They're, they're, but uh, at the end of the day, fifty quid's fifty quid, and they're not bothered. If they're right. sending an alpaca to Africa, yeah, and I'm saying, "Can you get one to London?" To them, that is less hassle. Right. Th that don't, th uh, Carl. That's not how it works. You can't just go and say, "Oh, I'll have one of them." They're not bothered. It's for charity. Of course they are. You can't buy an alpaca for twenty quid. <laughs> Christ, I'm at plus posters and packaging. They're big bastards. <laughs> Read about a pub that is getting some stick because they've stopped a horse going in. <laughs> it's been the horses regular for ages, but <laughs> there's been some new owners who've taken over the pub and they said they're serving fresh fruit and don't want a horse in there anymore. <laughs> 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 oh God! We've got to publish this diary. There's some dynamite got, stuff. In we've here. got to publish the diary. I mean, this is never mind, peeps. Can't we put this out next year or something with a oh, special CD? I I, I it just, it's amazing. You got you can't you can't keep this from the world, Carl. I met Suzanne after she finished work, and we went for a brew in another cafe. God, Jesus! It's always having a brew in a cafe. It's like a sitcom. <laughs> it is. Suzanne said I look tired and fed up. I think it's because I ain't been sleeping. Or the Madeira, okay? We don't know. <laughs> Always been going to every news agency in London, looking at gay magazines. <laughs> she taught me some way to breathe that will relax me. I wasn't feeling that relaxed though because the person behind the counter was banging about making a coffee. Noise stresses me out. I wonder if less deaf people die of stress than people with working ears do. <laughs> Oh, it's the theories. It's the it theories. It is such a noisy world, though, isn't it? It is. Well, London is noisy, very noisy. I think just everywhere, just noise in general. They were yeah. saying how, like, every noise has been used at least five times or something. What do you mean? 
Because there's only so many noises in the world. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. No, there's only so many what noises. What do you mean every noise has been used five times? <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know what it means. Because I don't know. I have no idea. I've, I, every noise once has been used at least five times. There's only so many noises. It's like a piano, isn't there? There's only so many notes. Yeah. And there's only so many noises. Right. But because there's so much stuff, the same noises are being used again. I don't know what that means. <laughs> By whom? Who's reusing the noise? By whatever. So, so a woodpecker have... when it's woodpecking? Yeah, yeah, some, some birds make noises that would sound like a Ford Escort. Just because there's, there's only so many noises that people can use. <laughs> what is he talking about? Noises are a byproduct. Outside yeah. an instrument, yeah. noises and are a 